Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called For Glory by Alex Wolf. It's made by Spielcraft Games and it is for two players. It takes about 60 to 90 minutes and it's for ages 14 and up. And in the game For Glory, you're going to be playing as combative gladiators in an arena. It is a deck building game of sorts as well as an area control game where you're going to try and place gladiators into certain arenas and combat in those areas to gain control of them, scoring you victory points. Every time you control an area, you're going to get either the card for that area, which will give you some kind of ability, or that area will stay out there, but regardless, you'll get one point, and if you can get six, you're going to win the game. You'll be choosing during the main portion of the game to buy certain things like patrons as well as other gladiators and some tactics and reactionary cards up until the point where the arena gets filled and then after the last player takes their turn you will then be proceeding into combat being able to play an attack and a reaction and a tactic until the all the areas are cleared up until the point somebody gets six points as the game progresses there's more gladiators that will be put into an area so for instance that last one's going to be 24 points of gladiators well the first one is only going to be six and that's the basic idea for the game for glory let's go and take it down below and I'll show you this two-player deck building strategy game. So here we have the game for glory and everything that comes with for this two-player game and we went ahead and set it up for two players. Every player is going to get a player board, a certain amount of coins, as well as a deck of 14 cards. These are the 14 cards in the deck which we'll talk about. There's a set of coins here for a basic supply pool and these are the glory you're going to incur as you successfully accomplish uh, securing these specific areas. If you get six of these you win the game. This is is basically health tokens that as you defeat certain gladiators or do damage to them you place them on the specific gladiator and they will take damage up to the point where they are removed from the arena there is also the specific fleeting glories and lasting glory uh, arena cards and there's a stack here you're going to shuffle them out and deal out three of them these ones here are going to stay and they're going to push and pull depending on who secures these areas here and these ones without the swords will go to the player that wins it as every round goes on, you'll have these boast cards that will increase in value from 6 to 14 to 19 to 24, and that will be the requirement for gladiator numbers in the arena total to basically trigger the arena phase. Uh, as well as there are three decks of cards. You're going to have the gladiator cards, you're going to have the reaction and tactic cards, and then this is the shop that you're going to be getting these SPQR cards, as well as currency cards that you can use to purchase more cards. And that is pretty much what you get, other than this being the... Uh, Oh, this is basically the uh, player that is last, not the first player token, but the last player token. Uh, favor of the crowd, I believe that's what it's called. On your board here, it's going to tell you the machinations, which is going to be to first ready patrons and arenas. These are arenas, so when they're turned to the side in your area for controlling them, you'll unturn them. And then patrons are these cards here that will also turn. Uh, you'll be taking actions, and they also, these are the three actions, discarding and then refilling your supply, drawing seven cards, and then passing uh, the play to the next player. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about our hand first before we go into that. So we're going to be getting the business as usual income cards, which is not to be confused with coins. They do produce the same type of currency, but these last past your end of turn, and these do not. You'll be discarding your hand at the end of the turn, so use the business as usual cards as best as you possibly can. And remember, you cannot make change for cards that you buy items with. So each of these cards is going to have a value of one, and it also tells you which player is going to have these specific cards. Then you're going to also get two starting gladiators. They do not have an SPQR cost, so they're basically going to be free to play into the arena. And not only that, but they will have their attack, their defense, and their initiative, which will determine whether or not they're going to go first in a specific arena as a cumulative total. This is a Crooked Senator. He is a patron card, and he will allow you to play special gladiators that have a specific cost of SPQRs. In this case, I could play this guy if I wanted to, if I had him specifically out, but no more than one unless I had more than one of these guys. There's also a coal card and a fresh perspective. The coal will let you get rid of cards in your hand, as well as, or instead, gain currency tokens. This is basically going to remove cards you do not want to have a more high, higher likelihood of getting cards you do want in your hand. And fresh perspective will let you gain one coin token 
and you can remove three cards from a specific area or deck and put three new ones out, which is a good way of refreshing these decks here. Every player is going to have the exact same deck of, of the same cards, and they're going to take these and they're going to go ahead and shuffle them and make sure you give them a pretty good shuffle, so that way you don't end up with seven coins in your hand, but it's still likely you will. So back to our player board here, we're going to have our deck, which is going to go here, our discard pile, the reserve, where we're going to be putting the specific actions and reaction cards, and then our coin reserve, glory, which we'll be placing these little tokens here, and then our villa, where we put our specific senators and whatnot on this side of the board. So he'll go ahead and start off, and we'll show you how it works. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven cards to begin. We don't need to ready a patron or arena card. And then we're going to look at our hand. Well, we got this guy here, and he's basically going to be able to place in one of these three areas. Now, the only trick with the arenas is you're only going to have two ever per uh, arena phase. So if you have a guy on this specific arena, then no one is going to be fighting for this arena. You will always be fighting for this one, but only one of these two are going to be active, and it's going to be based on the player who first chose which of these arenas that, that you wish to fight for. So if he goes ahead and chooses this arena right here, this one is basically going to be null and void for this specific combat phase, and you're only going to be playing against these two specific arenas. I've got some currency tokens, and I've got a fresh perspective, which is pretty useful if I don't like any of these cards here. So I've got one, two, three, four, five currency. I'll go ahead and discard the five currency. I'll take this servant's... Uh, errand which is nice it's a four currency instead of a one and it costs me five down below there and then i've got this last guy here which just lets me go ahead and gain one token or coin and uh, then i can go ahead and uh, choose to refresh any area i want and put three new cards out so hopefully this doesn't give my opponent any good cards and then it'll be the next player's turn. The next player is going to go ahead and draw his seven cards, four, five, six, and seven. And he's got coins as well. In fact, he's got the same amount. And he'll go ahead and discard his five. And perhaps he wants to instead buy a backstab and a snare, uh, which are useful during the combat step. So we'll place those in our discard pile. And then we actually have our uh, SPQR card. So we're going to go ahead and put that card over here in our villa, which means we'll be able to play gladiators now with a specific uh, cost on them up in the top left-hand corner. And then once again, we also have a fresh perspective. So we're going to gain one coin, placing in our coin pool, and then we can go ahead and clear out three cards and put three new ones out in these bizarre areas here. And then it's the next player's turn. And the game is basically just going to continue. You're going to be drawing cards from your deck, three, four, five, six, and seven, and playing them out. And when your deck runs out, you'll simply shuffle your discard together and form a new deck. Four more, which will then let him buy... Um, not enough of anything, actually, but if I spend one coin, I can go ahead and pick up this guy here, put it into my discard pile. This is Legatus, and it is a Villa card, and it gives you a specific ability, which is plus one to your uh, initiative when determining initiative, and an SPQR, which is useful for putting over here. I'm going to have my SPQR card go over there, and then we're going to go ahead and put another one of these guys out, and we'll put them over here. Finally, there's the coal card, which I'll go ahead and just gain two coins and place it in our coins pool. Although it could be used if I wanted to, to remove a card from my hand. And let's go ahead and show you the last turn here, refreshing this up. And go ahead, what do we got here? Two guys. Maybe I'll put these two guys over here. I've got my coal card, which I'll go ahead and use that in a different way by getting rid of this one card. And then I've got three coins for business as usual. I'll do these three as well as two more to then get another Servant's Errand, which is going to give me more currency throughout the game as opposed to my sad opponent who only has one. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and refresh. And the game is basically just going to keep going. You'll be able to buy any of these characters you want, any of these specific tactics cards that you want and or reactions up until the point where the number of red symbols in the top right hand corner is equal to or higher than this number here. And the play will go until this specific player, the player with this little crowd's favor token, ends their turn. So if I had, for instance, put out a guy with three here, that'd be three, four, five, six, and seven, he would still get his turn, and then after that, the arena step would occur. So we'll go ahead and just fast forward a second, which is going to be pretty easy. I'll just take one of these guys and place it on this here, and I'll take this guy here and place it over here. So I can show you a simulation, simulation of the arena phase. Uh, and we've got six here, and this is obviously more than six now. So we've gone ahead and entered into the arena step, in which case we're going to be checking from the right-hand side to the left-hand side, starting with this one here. And then we're going to check initiative. So we look at these cards here, and we look at these two cards here. This gives us two, and this gives us two. 
And there's going to be certain times in which case you're going to have um, bonuses, for instance, like I showed you before with, uh, I think it's this guy in here. No, nope, it's actually this guy in here. So we'll go ahead and show you this one here. So if he was just like that right there, in which case he is going to give you plus one to all of his initiatives. So this would be two plus three, and this would just be two, which means that this, this team would get to go first. Not only that, but you can actually have cards in a place called the reserve. So during the game, you'll be able to take these cards and place them face down here, and you can buy them and put them into your hand just before the arena staff. There's a whole explanation of how it works. You'll do late registration, which lets you place guys from your hand onto the field, and then there's going to be the ability to um, purchase these reserve cards and put them into your hand, which will mainly be reactions and tactics that will let you do damage, reflect damage, or protect your guys in some way. And then the battles will fight, and you'll go from the player with the most initiative to the least and back and forth and how it works is you'll be able to make an attack and a tactic one of each with one of the characters and if you have a tactic card in your hand a card that is a tactic uh, so for instance i'll just show you this one here as though it's in my hand so this player here is going to go ahead and attack and when you attack you turn the guy to the side and you stick the attack to the defense of any character you want in which case we'll choose this one here and his, the two goes to two, and this guy is simply going to be removed, in which case it goes to this card pile, and the player who lost is going to actually gain a coin. And then after that, he could choose to play a tactic card, and maybe he will. He'll play this one that does three damage to a target, targeting this guy here, and this guy will perish as well, gaining this character another, or this player another coin. And now, as you can see, the opponent doesn't have any characters here anymore, so this player would simply win this area. When you win the area, you send your guys to this card pile, and you gain a glory. And then you move on to the next place over here, but not before you take this card and place it over there, which is a card you'll be able to use as a tactic for the rest of the game. Uh, now, these are the fleeting glory areas, which means if somebody wins one side or the other, this will just stay on that sp specific player's side until the other player takes it over. But in this case, we've got a player with one and player of two initiative, plus this one is three. So he'll attack first, and he'll go ahead and swing for one at this guy. And this guy is going to take that one damage, and this is where you see damage get uh, enacted. And then there'll be this player's turn here, and he'll turn and swing for two on this guy with one, thusly removing this player to the discard pile, gaining this player a coin. And this player will take this area, which means that this little sword will go over here, this guy will go to the discard pile, and this guy will get a glory token. So now he'll be able to use this ability just like he would be able to use this ability, except for the fact that if somebody ever took control of this that wasn't this player here, it would probably go to the other player. Uh, so that would be how it works. You're also going to then refill this card to over here, and the player who won this card is going to get a boast card put into their deck, which is basically a card that does absolutely nothing. So you'll want to get rid of that if you possibly can. In which case, you're going to then go ahead and continue the game, and you're going to be shuffling your hand, drawing seven, and progressing, trying to get new gladiators as well as new reactions and tactics, and claiming the best amount of gold you possibly can. Don't forget that you will need to have as many of these SPRQ card, SPQR cards as you can, otherwise you won't be able to play certain uh, units. Uh, for instance, if I had this in my hand and I want to play this here, I couldn't because I do not have enough. And let's just say that I had this guy here and I played this on there. Uh, I have enough, but if this ever gets turned to the side or removed in some way, this character will die. So be aware of that. This is a specific type of currency that you need to have accessible for you in order to play units. But that's the basic idea of four glory. If any player ever gets uh, control six areas at any point in time, that is going to make them the winner. And also, there's never going to be a tie because you're always going to start with this area here. And if he had five and he had five and this player won this one, that would make this player the winner of the game of for glory all right let's come up and talk about it so before we get into my review for the game for glory let's talk about a couple caveats and the first thing i kind of goofed on is you're going to be doing one of the fleeting glory areas first one of the arenas for fleeting glory and then you'll move on to the next one and that does change who can win the game let's talk about some of the cards like for instance these supply cards or scheme cards and income cards one of them here says gain two coins and the other one says use this card to get three to, to uh, count as three currency there is a difference obviously one does not last until the end of turn and the other does coins are definitely stronger as far as currency goes uh, provided you need them specifically for buying things back or if you need them to make change and whatnot uh, then of course there's a bunch of other cards in this deck specifically that are going to have the spqr cards that will have something like oh it, you can use this card as a tactic to let you draw a card and discard a card or as a reaction to prevent damage from your characters or maybe all of your characters just get a uh, plus one to attack 
which is a really really good one and then the other one is something like uh, all your all each of your battles would get plus one to initiative which is also very good uh, the different types of reactions and tactics are stuff like counterattack which is very powerful and whenever damage is assigned to you you can redirect up to three of it from one target gladiator to another very useful Piercing is a thing that does one damage to a target gladiator. If that gladiator is defeated during this combat, you can pay two coins to return this card to your hand. Oh my gosh, that's pretty cool for only one cost. And then shield, when damage is assigned, prevent up to two damage to a target gladiator. So also a good way, it's just not a counter attack. And then finally, you've got gladiators. And there is a wide variety of them. And uh, even if some of them are more expensive with a higher cost, those are re relatively good, but you have to be able to afford them with the SPQR cards. If you don't have those, they're not very good, especially if your opponent can turn those SPQR cards to the side, uh, basically debilitating you, it's dangerous. Whereas opposed to playing a bunch of small ones can ultimately have you win the game because you're going to go back and forth with your, your characters up until the point where they're all exhausted and then you refresh them all until one player loses all of the units on one side or another. You got this character here is Spiculus, which is a guy who can be used as a tactic to deal one unpreventable damage to himself and then do one damage to a specific other gladiator. He's got a one cost as well as he does one damage. He has three defense and one speed. That's pretty good. Uh, and one that I really liked was Thrax. He's got two damage and seven defense or health and one initiative, but whenever he takes damage, he'll get one attack for each damage that he's taken. That is a good one. Uh, and this is my other favorite one, which is Hopalamukus. Hopalamukus. He's, whenever he's exhausted, whenever he turns aside after attacking, each other gladiator loses all their text abilities, making it just a brawl. And if you set your deck up correctly, you can really make him very useful. But all the gladiators have their own uniqueness to them, and there's probably about two or three of each of the same gladiator in the deck, so there's definitely quite a variety of cards. Okay, so that is the game. What do I think about this game? Well, first of all, if you don't like two-player games, this is a two-player game, so you're probably not watching the right type of video for yourself. But if you do like two-player games, so the next thing comes down to is how combative do you want to be when playing a two-player game? This is a competitive game, and I mean, it is an attacky style game. I had to play my first game with the designer of it at Gen Con, and then I've played a multitude of games with my friends here and with my cameraman, and it really does pull no punches. You're hitting each other pretty hard. Sometimes you can see that you're not going to be successful early enough in the game to where you might want to start over, and other times it comes down to a really close on the wire. It's definitely one of those games that the more you play, the better you're going to get at it, the more choices in tactics will uh, become a more relevant choice. Choices will become more relevant as the game progresses. So determining where you want to place on the two specific fleeting glory arenas is going to be important as well because placing down on a specific area when one player may only need one glory to win could potentially mess you over because you might be in a lower state and if they are trying to only play in one area you'll have to deal with them in that specific area maybe they'll get, you know you have to kind of like spread your forces out basically if you're behind to a certain extent uh, but the game has a lot of really cool points to it the theme of the game works very well you do feel like you are gathering gladiators you feel like you need the patrons in order to support your gladiators and you need the currency in order to be used using tactics and reactions to progress you throughout the different arenas and counter your opponent's cards. Being able to play those tactics is nice, the reactions is even better. I do like the fact that as players would attack me with certain things, I'd always be like, counter-strike, counter-strike, and redirecting that damage was a really fun way of dealing with a certain uh, uh, advantage that another player might have. Having a lot of cards in your hand doesn't matter as much as having the right cards in your hand, so making sure you select the right cards is important, and like any other deck builder, the ability to cull cards from your hand does put you at a slight disadvantage, but it also increases the likelihood that you'll get the cards that you want on the, pre on the, on the consecutive round, which is a really nice thing as well. Uh, the game is rather smooth and can be rather quick once you get the idea of what's going on, what you want to do in your turn. You'll usually have a good idea of what your turn is going to consist of. The only time that really changes is when it gets really close to the brawl that you're going to be having in the arena do you want to start it does your opponent want to start it do you want to drop them all down like rummy real quick or do you want to slowly start pacing them out and watch and see what your opponent does and do you have, want to have a set of uh, basically hidden reinforcements in your hand to basically counter your opponent when they think they're, they're going to win you're like oh i have three more guys in my hand i'm dropping them all down for nine currency and you don't and now i'm in the lead as opposed to you when you thought you were going to get the better of me so you have those specific choices you can make in the game there's a lot of different reactions and tactics 
that can be used as the game progresses, depending on the types of cards you're going to get, like the arena cards you're going to use these multiple times. This one here says that you can exhaust it to do a damage to a gladiator, which is a pretty useful ability to each gladiator. Oh, that's even better. And then, of course, you'll also have the patron cards, but turning them over is going to risk you not being able to have certain gladiators out on the field. Anyway, basically what I'm saying is there's a lot of choice in the game. It's definitely extremely competitive, and if you're not a competitive player, this is not going to be for you. If you like a serious back-and-forth style game, you're going to really enjoy For Glory. If you like a deck-building game with a bit of area control slash tactics, this is going to be the game I definitely suggest taking a look at. I specifically love games that involve the Roman Colosseums. I like the gladiator based games and so this one was already I was, I was very interested in to begin with i definitely definitely don't see any uh, problems with how the game plays it's just going to be the type of player that you are as to whether or not you're going to want to play the specific game because feelings may get hurt if you are not prepared to deal with for glory overall a solid two-player deck builder game definitely one of the uh, more complex in nature two-player deck builder games with a lot more choice and variety something you can take a look at down below on kickstarter if you'd like